Too many North Carolina counties worried that many nonviolent people are stuck in jail because they can't pay bail. Let's see what happens when they say enough is enough. This is NC Impact. NC Impact is made possible by funding from Civic Federal Credit Union and is a public media North Carolina production in association with the University of North Carolina School of Government. Some judicial and law enforcement leaders believe the book is thrown too harshly at individuals accused of low-level offenses. The result is high bail amounts that keep a person jailed and taxpayers covering the bill. In um, 2013, um, I got arrested and I was charged with like elderly abuse and credit card fraud and things like that. Originally my bond was $10,000. Well, the judge raised my bond to $30,000. When I went back upstairs, I think I cried for like three days straight because I'm like, I'm gonna be, in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna be here forever because I don't have $3,000 laying around to pay a bondsman. I lost my job. I lost my housing because I had Section 8 at that time. So I sat in jail for two months. They dismissed my charges and was like, you're free to go. We want to hold folks pretrial if they're either a risk of flight or safety to the community or both, not on your ability to pay. We were able to create a new process where I changed the bond policy and I took out what has historically been used uh, in North Carolina around the country where you just have a bond chart. You'll just have a corresponding class of felony and a corresponding uh, bond amount. We replaced it with a uh, sort of a decision tree that we asked folks to consider. But the decision tree really is just a process by which we take what the law in North Carolina is and we just reconsider and reformulate how the magistrates and the judges make decisions on who should be released pretrial and those that shouldn't, and if they are detained pretrial, some guidance on what their bond should be. We are not talking about releasing folks that are charged with uh, serious felonies, or we're not talking about releasing folks that are uh, charged with uh, crimes of violence. But what we are talking about are uh, some of these low-level uh, misdemeanors and uh, less uh, serious uh, felonies. I'm solely clueless. That's what I try to help people now, is to navigate through that system, and I try to be the person for people that I wanted when I was in jail. Haywood County Detention Center is teaming up with a local faith-based group. Together they meet individuals in jail and prepare them for life outside and hopefully a new beginning. I got released from the jail over here in Haywood County. I just pretty much left jail and had no direction of where I was going to go, what I was going to do. Lost all my personal belongings, everything that I had. Lost my wife at the time. I came from having everything to losing everything in like two weeks. I met one of the peer support specialists in the jail and we just kind of started talking and you know, I gave him my story of how I ended up in jail, why I was there, what I'd hoped to do once I got out of jail. And you know, he thought, you know, coming here was a great opportunity for me to do all those things that I needed to do. We are a faith-based nonprofit. We work with folks who are homeless, um, and we try to address people's basic needs. Back in July, we're granted um, an award from the state to be able to have staff that are from Pathways located within the jail. So they are peer support specialists who work with um, some of the inmates who largely um, are in for drug charges or their first time offenders. We really have to pay attention to caring for the person and looking at what are their life experiences, what trauma has happened, why is it that the drug is a good idea or where did the mental health issue come from and then how do we treat those symptoms of the deeper issues so that we really can help people break the cycles and have new foundations to move on to a different kind of life. With the help of this place it's it's made me have faith again that there is a chance for me to rehabilitate, get back out there and be a part of society like I should be. My focus is not to go back to jail. It's not a fun place to be and just being here, I've met so many different people and heard so many different stories, and it's, it's made me want to change myself. Haywood County Sheriff is changing his approach to fighting low-level crime. When an arrest can be avoided, it is. 
the old adage, we're not going to arrest our way out of this problem, is absolutely so true. People are now being issued citations instead of uh, being arrested for some of these uh, minor offenses. And uh, of course it is still at the discretion of the officer whether that he issues a citation or uh, makes an arrest. We just want to make sure that if the officer or the deputy makes that decision to write the citation, that we end up not having to come back out later on that evening or uh, later on to uh, have to deal with the same problem again. Generally speaking, those that are detained pretrial tend to plead guilty more often than those that are not. If you can't make bond for whatever reason, um, you sit in jail regardless of your innocence or guilt. And so a lot of times, by the time people get to their court date, they just want to enter a plea just to get out. And so with this program, um, I hope to not be seeing so much of that. We don't want folks pleading guilty if they're not guilty. And we also don't want folks to forfeit a defense if they feel like they have one. The relationship that I establish or I hope that our detention officers establish and our peer support and our faith-based community that comes in, that we're able to actually show these people the kind of love and the kind of care that they, that they deserve and that they need. And a lot of times, if we will just do that much for a person, it is amazing how that they'll respond and how that they will uh, just completely change. Visit unctv.org slash ncimpact.